This is Pop Health Week on Healthcare Now Radio. I'm Greg Masters, Managing Director of Health Innovation Media, the executive producer and co host of the show. Joining me in the virtual studio is co founder and principal co host Fred Goldstein, President of Accountable Health LLC. At Pop Health Week, we engage industry leadership and stakeholder voices spanning payer, provider, patient, vendor, and regulatory communities in population health best practices and strategy. Connect with us via www.popupstudio.productions or follow and direct message me on Twitter at GregMastersMPH, and that is Greg with two Gs. On today's episode, our guests are Tara Fund, PharmD, Product Manager, and Parth Shaw, MBA, Vice President of Product for Assure Care. We discuss the historical challenges in connecting pharmacies and pharmacists to the larger healthcare ecosystem and the facilitation of the patient's journey, where pharmacists stand in integrating with the healthcare enterprise and connective care, including health plans and payers, and how pharmacy becomes a bigger stakeholder in the overall management of the population's health, including where pharmacists stand being able to bill for clinical services. And with that introduction, Fred, over to you. Thanks so much, Greg and Taryn Parth. Welcome to Pop Health Week. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get you both on. So why don't we start, Tara, why don't you uh, give us a little sense of your background and a little bit about Assure Care, and then we'll let you introduce yourself as well, Parth. Absolutely. So I'm a pharmacist by training, actually, and I've spent most of my career in the community pharmacy setting. I worked uh, at a national grocer uh, doing various um, prescriptive pilots and medical billing pilots uh, across the country nationally. So I've spent a lot of time in kind of innovative community pharmacy practice space. And the last couple of years, I've been working with AssureCare, and we have been working on medical billing and supporting pharmacist providers. Um, we kind of support the entire process from start to finish, including setting them up with clinical programs and clinical services and supporting that process. We also facilitate credentialing, enrollment, and EHR for documenting visits and submitting claims and revenue cycle management programs. And most recently, I've been starting to engage with various payers on opportunities for value-based care uh, contracts and um, ways to really take the pharmacist rendered care to a whole new level. Fantastic. And you, Parth? I'm Bart Shah. I'm the VP of product at Assure Care. Again, a pharmacist by background, not, not in America, but in India, also biochemist by background, have been with Assure Care for now six years. Um, so have seen the ins and outs. I am a technologist now by background, started with clinical, now became a technologist, the need of the hour. Uh, on what we do from a platform perspective and the journey that we have gone through. We realized six years ago that the industry is going to see a big shift when it comes to pharmacy and its vertical integration into population health management. So we as a sure care started building innovative systems that could impact population health as a whole and deliver value-based care. So our application today and the breadth of the application today includes everything from utilization management to case and care management to pharmacy management, everything Terra set plus specialty pharmacy as well. So this allows all the entire ecosystem to be connected on a single platform and drive better patient outcomes. That's that's a great way to introduce this topic. And so Tara, when we think about this and you look at population health, we're starting to hear about bringing pharmacists in and integrating them. How are you looking at that and, and sort of how does that work? Um, so really, I think there's many different ways that pharmacists can impact population health. There's the traditional way that we've been doing it for several years now, which is really focusing around uh, MTM programs, medication therapy management programs, and primarily supported by the Medicare Advantage plans. Um, however, that's continuously expanding to include commercial and Medicaid plans as well. Um, there are medication management programs or MTM that pharmacists provide, but they're also starting to provide kind of acute needs, um, point of care services. We saw that definitely during COVID, times of COVID, um, but also looking at quality measures, HEDIS measures, uh, commercial plan measures, and CQA, and ways that they can really shift the needle for payers, especially in rural populations, um, where there's a, a definitely a shortage of um, providers and a social vulnerable, socially vulnerable, vulnerable population. <laughs> and and Parth, so you've sort of established the technology to connect these up and bring the pharmacists into that care process or that care management process. 
Yes. So from a technology standpoint, I think pharmacists were always on in a silo on the side. Technologies for population health management never considered pharmacy workflows as part of this integrated system. So I think that is one way how we're going to promote pharmacists being part of this ecosystem and the journey of the journey of positive outcomes for a patient and reducing total cost of care. So that's one thing where our application has succeeded successfully uh, is that we have been able to vertically integrate not only technology, but the users of the platform as well, and eventually, eventually provide a single patient record where pharmacists usually, because of the silos, would never have access to that data. So all once you bring all of this together, technology will start promoting how pharmacists become mainstream um, in the population health management space. Mm -hmm. And are, are you, and I don't know whether Tara or Parth should address this, are you integrating that in sort of with the primary care physicians, with clinics, with healthcare systems? How does that work? So we primarily, we primarily are working to integrate that with the health, with, I would say from a payer standpoint, not directly with the clinics. We have applications that can absolutely do that, essential as well. But these are directly integrating either the technology into the pharmacist's day-to-day -day workflow, so they're not being ponging through multiple systems, and also allowing payers to use a single single system to basically integrate UM nurses, social social workers, case managers, and pharmacists onto the same platform. So the payers are using this system and bringing that expertise into their care management program, in essence? The payers are using it, and... Um, Tara, you can the best word would be community pharmacies, a large retail chains are using these as well and and then integrating the technology that we have into their day-to-day -day dispensing workflow. So it becomes easy for the pharmacist to actually address and deliver better outcomes instead of trying to go to a completely different application, which is a huge deterrent for provider manage engagement and management. We also do have independent pharmacies using an EHR that does communicate with physicians as well, um, uh, providing that paid that continuity of record and um, facilitates referrals back and forth for chronic disease management, things like managing patients with high blood pressure, for example. So it's kind of the entire spectrum. Got it. So does the system itself then integrate with various EHRs that the providers themselves might be using? There's not a direct integration, but it's able to communicate with the provider. So it's able to facilitate that communication. Got it. And this allows then a local community pharmacist to participate better within the care of that individual, I guess, and do medication therapy management on behalf of the clinic or, or to help them out? Yeah, and it's really much more than me um, medication therapy management, especially with the pharmacists that are using the full EHR. Um, they do chronic disease management, so asthma, high blood pressure, patients with diabetes. They do kind of a small services set of acute need services like UTI, yeast infection, Small, uh, minor bites, burns, bee stings, et cetera. So kind of small suite of services there, strep and flu test and treatment. So they can do testing and prescribe medications to treat that. Um, and then uh, travel medicine, vaccines, kind of your standard, more standard pharmacy services, in addition to managing high cost medications. Yeah, and I guess since we're now seeing the ability and the expansion, I guess, of the ability of pharmacists to bill for services, this allows them to then begin to do that themselves or through their community pharmacies? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, and really, it helped the, the providers, the local providers in the community meet their measures and provide better quality care by having kind of an extension of their clinic staff with the pharmacist who is seeing the patient on a regular basis as they're coming in to fill medications. Right. It seems like we've really, uh, up until more recently, not leveraged the expertise, I guess, of pharmacists in the overall healthcare system, and particularly from a population health management approach. I think back to 20 years ago when I was doing some of this, and we really, you know, we were using community-based nurses or telephonic nurses and care coordinators and uh, community-based health workers and things like that, but really hadn't yet integrated the pharmacy. So do we see that continuing to grow in this uh, new age of healthcare where we're trying to get into value-based care and other things like that? Absolutely. <laughs> I think that is where we are headed. I think providers, patients, payers, everyone's really seeing the need to continue to provide accessible quality care. And this is a, a group of providers really ready to, to do that. And pharmacy too also is looking at 
different ways to diversify revenue streams as reimbursement around traditional dispensing models has um, not been as lucrative as it was in the past. And so it's we see a closure of pharmacies more and more recently. And so this is kind of a way that they can improve patient care and you know keep their doors open to be able to render that care needed. Uh -huh. And so this is this technology typically, uh, it, uh, you mentioned that community-based pharmacies or clients, health plans, is that who typically purchases the product and then implements it throughout the system? Yes, and we do have, and we have providers also using the EHR as well. So more traditional physicians, chiropractors, et cetera. And we also have um, nutrition services as well, supporting dietitians. Wow. So when you, when you look at this, what are sort of the things that you think, uh, those various players, I mean, obviously each have a little bit of a different viewpoint on the system, the pharmacist, the health plan, the uh, primary care practice, what are some of the things that they must have, you think, to kind of achieve their goals and and uh, and get those better outcomes? You wanna take that part? <laughs> yeah, so I think first of all is the acceptance that everyone is needed in to bring the total cost of care down. Uh, and I think the plans that are accepting that are accepting systems where this integration exists. So I would say first is acceptance and that's how technology is gonna get implemented. The biggest barrier for technology implementation has just been how large it is of the acceptance for these organizations. Uh, the second, I would say patient management systems. We have not yet talked about, we've always been revolving around how pharmacists would benefit, but eventually it's the patient who's benefiting. So any patient engagement tools have to be integrated into this technology and into this ecosystem so patients can get the information that they, they need. So with your QRS Act 2021, uh, every patient has the right to access the information that they need on their fingertips. Uh, so getting those kinds of tools in play is gonna be extremely important. Um, and the third being systems like ours, can integrating directly or sitting along sitting on the side with applications that exist outside the outside us in, into this ecosystem as well and great example is one of our customers have embedded our system within their workflow uh, in their dispensing platform what that did was that allowed these pharmacists to not to not log into multiple systems use a single platform see if someone is missing a refill and also see that they should get diabetic care. Both are happening within the same um, within the same workflow. So what that is doing is that is allowing uh, pharmacists to provide these enhanced services that Tara was talking about with ease and use technology like how it is meant to be used. And I think the last thing I would say is data analytics. We have not talked about that yet. Extremely useful to stratify populations um, and having and giving these pharmacies the ability to do that uh, so they can identify who's at risk, they can identify how they can help these patients and also better cater to their needs. So if someone's coming up to fill their um, hypertensive prescription up for the first time, what kind of education material should be provided to them? So having likes to say, you're the first time, they're filling it for the first time, talk to them for five more minutes. So I would say if you take this in, all these and bring it into a single system or multiple system that can easily talk to each other, then you'll, you'll efficiently manage the problem of cost, uh, cost of care. So Parth, can you sort of talk through what the different data elements are that are feeding into your system? I know I saw as I was going through your website, et cetera, things like social terms of health and focusing on that. And I assume you, this is being used, like you said, to identify the individuals and then sort of what they might need. So what sort of elements are going in there? You mentioned the EHR. Are you getting other data sets? Yeah, so we're getting data sets from um, your typical data sets would be your eligibility data that to identify a patient's eligibility, you would have your provider rosters to identify who are the best people to serve these patients. Uh, you have your prescription claims. You have your medical claims information as well. Um, a new entrant into the market is frequently abused drugs. So we're getting files from CMS for opioid abuse that are being managed within our platform. Then we have social determinants of health data that is also flowing into the system. And then we take all this information to basically stratify the populations in the uh, stratify the population in the right buckets, and then have the experts address these issues um, along the way as well. Just tuning in, you're listening to Pop Health Week on Healthcare Now Radio. 
We're speaking with Tara Fund, Farm D, Product Manager, and Parth Shaw, MBA, Vice President of Product at Assure Care. So, as you as you think about this, obviously everyone's talking about value based care. We're trying to move to value based care. Sometimes a little slower than we hope to get there, but with these alternative payment models, etc. So, can you talk about how the pharmacist fits in with that and how that's impacted this transition? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, a, a way that pharmacies generally across the country are most uh, directly able to impact, again, is going to be Medicare Advantage, of course, but um, for the medication therapy management, well, we've not seen that quite shift yet to the value-based care or alternative payment models. But what we are seeing is um, Medicaid's starting to really, they have, each state has their own set of core quality measures. And what we're seeing is that they're able to um, work with the pharmacists and be able to identify patients with either the pharmacy using the software or the, and or the payer can use, soft, use the data analytics to identify those patients that are not hitting their measures and have the pharmacies uh, provide that continuity of care and additional care, maybe around tobacco cessation, maybe around blood pressure, asthma medication ratios, antidepressant adherence, just a few examples. So these pharmacists can provide that care um, on an ongoing basis and feed that data back to the payer so that they're able to improve their quality measures and reimburse the pharmacies. And it can be risk sharing, um, upside, downside, can be a population per member per month, or it can just be an, a maximized um, fee-for-service schedule. And it's done on the more on the medical side. So claims-based data fed back to them that's impacting their quality metrics. Got it. And uh, Parth, obviously outcomes are critical. You're measuring it. Are you able to show or these um, systems that are using your uh, the Assure Care system able to show improvements in things like those HEDIS measures and some of those Medicaid outcomes and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, we we do about we have done in the last year in 2022 about 350 adherence outreaches using our application about a million or so case man or I guess member engagement outreaches which is, which are more population driven or also on the pharmacy side. So yes, we can absolutely identify track the performance metrics across um, different uh, different governing bodies. You can take it can be Pharmacy Quality Alliance, it can be NCQS HEDIS measures, it can be CMS STAR measures. Um, all of them are basically, easy, you can easily track within the application to say, hey, I'm at a two star, I need to close X amount of gaps to go to a three star, which is in turn indirectly helping the patient because you're addressing more gaps and also helping with the reimbursements that Tara was talking about. Another area that's always interesting is this, um, we're, we're seeing more and more of this push to AI and using AI. Have you started to integrate any of that into your platform or looking at that in the future? Uh, absolutely. So generative AI has become an extremely important point of conversation around the industry. Uh, we're excited to see where generative AI goes. We're also working on implementing generative, generative AI within our applications to say, hey, give me my mem pharmacist saying, Give me my member roster, who everyone who's diabetic and who can help me go from a two star to three star. Uh, something you generative AI can do easily. Generative AI can fill uh, simple assessments for these pharmacists as well and help with workflow. So then we are also working on the medical side on getting auto approval of authorizations when they're escalated from a nurse to a um, physician or an MD. So all of that is where we're looking heavily and investing heavily as an organization when it comes to AI and machine learning capabilities as well. And Parth, do you work with these um, pharmacists to help them provide education or things like that to the patients as well? Or is that a separate system that says, you know, you should just be educating them on the X, Y, and Z? So we've started to dabble a little bit around that. We do provide education uh, material directly from our system as well, but we also have integrations with other uh, third party vendors and building an ecosystem is what nor want to build everything ourselves is who provide these educational materials for let's say diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, and in a member engagement uh, application, which is a member facing portal, uh, those integrations become primary because a member can we will identify from your diagnostic state that hey, you need to understand more about how to measure uh, your diabetes regularly, you should actually also uh, understand why you should take your medication on time because you're hypertensive and we see that your 
um, adherence is falling below a reasonable range. So all of those are within the system, either built by us or integrating with other uh, vendors who pro who have these content that will be available in access. And uh, I would assume that um, you know issues like I'm thinking as a pharmacist deal must deal with this all the time is you know you look at the pill bottle and maybe your health literacy isn't so high, so you really have to um, help that patient understand what it is that they're that they're taking and how often to take it, et cetera, or take it with this or without that. Are those also things that are picked up by your your surveys and your social terms of health stuff? So what we're picking up is uh, first of all on the member portal that we have, we're simplifying the language and the instructions that are put on the bottle and making it again, everyone talks about taking the language to fifth grade English. That's what our application is achieving from a member engagement because those are the people who not understand who, who do not know exactly what to do with this medication. Um, and that's one. Our social determinants of health in the future will start incorporating educational components in it to say, hey, they do not have basic education. Spend more time with them because instead of them be having a risk of not taking the medications properly, we should spend 10 more minutes with them. Now, those are where engagement with the patient gets very, very important. And yes, our application is, it does address those kinds of issues by providing fifth grade um, educational material. So Tara, you're, you're out there, there's, uh, I would assume there are others like this. What sort of separates your company and its approach maybe from some of the others? Uh, we're actually really kind of leading the way and pioneering the pharmacist provider journey uh, across a nation. Um, there really isn't anyone that kind of does what we do, uh, combining the risk stratification and the, cert the ability to serve payers, providers, and the pharmacies um, in such an integrated fashion. Uh, so we are pretty innovative. I think one big piece is that we support all of the processes. So it's not just the software, but especially for those pharmacist providers. In a health system, you have teams of people who do credentialing and enrollment, revenue cycle management, set goals, metrics, kind of form, play a clinical coordinator type role. Pharmacies don't typically have all of that infrastructure, especially around the provider services pieces. And so by enabling uh, pharmacist provider uh, program implementation and services, cons uh, the consulting programs around that, supporting the credentialing and enrollment on the medical side with the payers, and really supporting that revenue cycle management aspect that's very, very different. Um, another big differentiator, I think, is being able to enable kind of that task and queue pop health management, care management type approach to software with an EHR, because that's very different to see kind of the, the distinctly different solutions typically. And so being able to marry the two is very um, cutting edge and it really allows pharmacists to provide that quality care. Yeah, and I noticed your system has a number of different modules. Um, you know, we saw it looked like you really were trying to cover the the waterfront in terms of care management, population health, revenue cycle, et cetera. Where do you maybe parts you get to take a hit at, and maybe you, Tara, where do you go from here? Take take our application to the masses. Uh, when, uh, I, I, we we've built a solution. I think next is the solution being ready for everyone and being in a state that everyone can use it. I think we uh, and Tara can talk more about it. We face challenges when it comes to cross integration of our application with other applications. So that's a challenge that we as an uh, organization would like to solve next, that we're an open market ecosystem, let's say like Salesforce, I'll use that example, and where people can integrate with us to provide a holistic solution and fill the gaps we don't have. So I would say that is next on building that ecosystem around us that can provide all the remaining services um, that we would not be able to provide and which are essential for the operations of a pharmacy. And Tara, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. The other big piece I, I think that we're slowly marching towards and will be a big cause for celebration once we obtain it is that really true connected patient record that enables the, the physician, the payer, the pharmacist, the dietitian, and the patient to all see that care in one place. Um, I, and that's America's dream for healthcare in many ways, I know. Um, but really being able to have that um, 
continuity and that that one universal patient record, I think, will be big. Um, and I also think, as Parth has described, that integration with pharmacy dispensing software and an EHR, I think being able to find ways to identify patients in workflow quickly and easily, um, everyday business for a pharmacy is a dispensing software, yet most clinical documentation platforms are separate. And even with integration, they still there's still various aspects um, of, of silo today. And that is going to be uh, very remarkable and very changing for healthcare and pharmacy once we continue to, to shift in that direction. Yeah, I think the, the, the de-siloization of healthcare is maybe finally happening. And it sounds like this system, you know, being able to integrate the pharmacists who have sort of been out there on their own is, is going to be critical to that kind of success. Just a real quick question. Maybe, Tara, you can answer this. What's the response of the pharmacist to using this? Um, I mean, it's it's they're excited. They're really looking for a way to be able to provide quality care, um, but it's a learning curve. So pharmacists are very used to uh, selling a product. You know, that's kind of become the core business of pharmacy. So you you know, and with pharmacy benefits and billing a pharmacy benefit, you know exactly what it's going to cost right up front um, before you sell the medication. Your copay patient is going to be fifteen dollars today. It's very, very different in the medical billing world where you find out an EOB, you know, seven to 14 days later um, and what kind of documentation charting requirements are there. So it's been a learning curve. There's excitement, enthusiasm. They also have been very um, rewarded by how the patients receive them for providing that additional care. Uh, we have a lot of stories that talk about how the patients say, you know, I get calls from my health insurance or, you know, my doctor's office calls, but I know you, I trust you, and I'm really excited that you want to be a part of my care. Um, and so we've had both patients and providers send just great, exciting feedback about our programs and our, and our pilots. And so that's been very, very exciting. Well, that's a fantastic way to end the show. Tara and Parth, I'd like to thank both of you for coming on. Thank you for having us. And back to you, Greg. And thank you, Fred. That is the last word on today's broadcast. We want to thank our listeners for tuning in and our special guests, Tara Fun, PharmD Product Manager, and Parth Shaw, MBA, Vice President of Product for Assure Care, for their generous time and insights today. To learn more about their work, Go to www.assurecare.com. You can also follow them on Twitter by at AssureCare. And finally, if you're enjoying our work at Pop Health Week, please like the show on the podcast platform of your choice, share with your colleagues, and do consider subscribing to keep up with new episodes as they're posted. We stream live on Healthcare Now Radio weekdays at 5.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern, and for you left coasters, 2.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. Pacific. For Pop Health Week, my co-host Fred Goldstein, this is Greg Masters saying please stay safe, everyone. Bye now. Bye now.